Okay, it's four o'clock. We'll call the meeting to order. Um, I have an opening remark to read. Welcome to the hybrid and in-person virtual meeting for the Committee of Adjustments for the Township of Central Frontenac. Just so everyone is aware, members of the public may join in person or virtually. For those of you who may be new to the Committee of Adjustments, my name is Philip Smith and I'm chair of the committee. We also have Fran Smith, Danny Meeks, Bill Everett, Lynn Clegas, Susan Irwin, and Nikki Gowdy. Cindy Deachman, our deputy clerk, will be assisting us as the meeting host. We are also joined by planning staff from the county. The format of the meeting will follow the agenda as posted online. Staff have also, ah, sorry, staff have also prepared a presentation for everyone to follow along with during the meeting. This will be shown on the screen. For each application with a public hearing, we will follow this format. I, as the chair, will introduce the file so that everyone knows where we are on the agenda. The planner will provide an overview of the application. We will then ask if there are any comments from the applicant or their agent. Committee members may then ask staff and the applicant or their agent questions, if any. The public will then have an opportunity to ask questions or provide comments. I encourage you to ask any questions that you may have. The committee will then deliberate and vote on the application. Voting will take place with members of the committee raising their hands or verbally confirming if attending online. I will then state whether the vote was, was carried. All members of the public will have an opportunity to provide comment on the new applications. If a person or public body does not make oral submission at the meeting or make written submissions to the Township of Central Frontenac before a decision is made, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision. Please note that as of January 1st, 2023, only persons specified in the act are permitted to appeal consent and minor variance applications. Township staff will be in touch following the meeting and will be forwarding a copy of the decision within 15 days to the applicant and anyone who has requested to be notified. Should you have any questions after the meeting, we encourage you to reach out to staff. The applicant, the minister, or any prescribed public body who has an interest in the matter may, within 20 days of making the decision or date of notice of appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal against the decision of the committee by following with the Secretary Treasurer of the Committee of a Notice of Appeal. I will now ask Cindy Deachman to provide an overview of how members attending virtually can participate. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Once the meeting is open to the public, the chair will ask if anyone has any questions or comments. Members of the public who are attending virtually will be asked to use the raise hand feature at the bottom of your screen. This alerts us that you would like to speak. Staff will then notify the chair that someone is willing to speak and then we'll proceed to un unmute your microphone. You'll receive a notification that your microphone has been unmuted. Please just wait a second after unmuting before speaking. If you are calling in by phone, please dial star nine when you would like to raise your hand during the meeting. You will hear a prompt on the phone that you have raised your hand and you will be notified when your microphone has been unmuted. This afternoon, we have five people uh, attending virtually and five people in person. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. In the unlikely account that we have encountered issues and the meeting cannot be restored within 15 minutes, the meeting will be postponed and staff will be in touch with each applicant. A notice will also be posted on the township social media letting you know. And with that, we have our first resolution moved by Danny Meeks and seconded by Fran Smith that the agenda be adopted as presented. Is there any amendments or additions to the agenda? No. As presented. All in favor? Carried. Uh, we have a re resolution moved by Danny Meeks and seconded by Bill Everett that the minutes of May 11th, 2023 be adopted as presented. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Uh, are there any disclosure of community interests and general nature thereof of any community members? Seeing none, we'll note that. And the first item on our agenda this evening is a deferred item, application A0223 Olson, reduction in setback. Jenny Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is an item that came before the committee in April and was deferred at that time due to concerns raised by the Conservation Authority and at the request of the applicant who wanted to look at some 
alternatives to what had been suggested with regards to slope stability. So what you see on the screen here today, um, or I guess right now, is the initial proposal. So initially they came in the proposal uh, for a new garage, which is shown here in the red uh, rear of a rock cliff located on the property. Uh, that had a footprint of 93 square meters or just over about a thousand square feet and was about 45 meters from the high water mark of Charbot Lake. Um, there's existing accessory structures on the property with a total footprint of 35 and a half square meters and the combined footprint of those two accessory structures exceeded the permitted maximum on a property within 60 meters. Um, the permitted maximum was equal to that of the proposed garage. So initially the variance was for both the size of the structure as well as a reduction in the rear yard from seven meters to five. When conservation went out and did a site visit, they determined that the setback to the rock cliff identified approximately halfway down this property with this dash green line um, for the proposed garage was not sufficient. And the options given were either to increase the setback of that proposed garage or alternatively complete a slope stability analysis to determine if this construction would cause any issues with regards to the stability of this slope. The applicant was not wanting to do that slope stability study. So after the meeting worked with the conservation authority and came up with the alternative here shown. So the one with many X's and crossed out lines was the original proposal. Um, what the new proposal is, uh, is to relocate the garage further towards the southern lot line and uh, slightly closer to the rear lot line due to the shape of the property. So that would reduce the minimum setback to the rear lot line um, from seven meters permitted to three meters is what's proposed through this application. Um, additionally, they reduce the size of that proposed garage from the 93 square meters to 48.3 square meters. Um, so the combined total footprint of the newly proposed garage and the existing detached garage actually is less than the maximum footprint permitted. So there's no variance being requested for that footprint size. Um, the variance now is only for a request for the reduction in the rear yard setback um, to as at that minimum of three meters from five meters. This was, I mean, it was circulated to the Conservation Authority, but the applicant actually worked quite closely with the Conservation Authority to come up with this. Um, and they are satisfied with the new location um, and size of the garage. They, they no longer, the Conservation Authority no longer has concerns with regards to the slope or the setback from the top of that slope. Um, so again, this is just um, summarizing that, that initially they wanted the size of that garage needed to be at least 11 and a half meters from the top of the slope, but with the reduced size of the garage, um, it, they were able to have it closer um, and it's closer to the existing driveway. So there's less concerns with regards to slope stability. Um, as a result of this revised proposal, the Conservation Authority now have no objection to the proposal and uh, indicated in writing that there's no further studies required uh, prior to the approval of this application. Um, it was not circulated for uh, review with regards to septic as there's no plumbing proposed in the new garage and the location of it is nowhere near the existing septic system on the subject property. There were no public comments received with regards to this application. Uh, planning staff are recommending that uh, committee hear any comments from the public today if there are any and approve the application as uh, submitted, but the revised submission with the smaller footprint and the uh, slightly increased setback from the water and the reduced setback to the rear lot line. Um, and that would be subject to any conditions in the planning report, really, which is uh, construction as proposed in the revised drawings and application, no adverse impacts, neighboring lots, sediment control, and uh, no alteration to drainage patterns, fairly standard for uh, conditions along the waterfront. Thank you, Jenny. Is there anybody here on behalf of the applicant or the applicant themselves that wish to make any comments? I think he's able to attend. Okay. Hello. Is there anybody from the committee that has any questions at this time? Anybody from the public? If there's anyone here um, attending virtually that wishes to speak, please use the raise hand feature.
I see no one, Mr. Chair. Thank you. We have a re uh, resolution moved by Danny Meeks, seconded by Francis Smith. In making the decision upon this application, the committee considered whether or not the permit re permission requested was minor and desirable for the appropriate development or use of the land, building, or structure, and that the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw and the official plan will be maintained, or in the case of a change in a use of property which is lawful non-conforming under the bylaw, as to whether or not this application has met the requirements of subsection 45.2 of the Planning Act concur in the following decision and reason for the decision. That minor variance application A0223 Olson for the property located at part lot 11 concession 10 in the geographic township of Olden, 1059 County, sorry, Country Lane for the construction of a detached garage with a maximum footprint of 48.3 square meters, 520 square feet to be located at a minimum of three meters, 9.84 feet from the lot line abutting country lane to be approved subject to the conditions and reasons noted in the planning report. And that the secretary, secretary treasurer shall issue the notice of decision in accordance with the requirements of the planning act, including providing the notice of decision to the applicant, any person or public body that made a written request to be notified and any other person or public body prescribed. All those in favor? Carried. So our next item is applications for consent. B 1123, Myers and Baker, creation of a new lot. Barker, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is an application for new lot creation on Ball Road, which is located between Road 38 and St. Andrew Lakes in the township of, or geographic township of Hinchinbrook. It's a currently a vacant property. Uh, the proposed new lot uh, will have about 180 meters of frontage on Ball Road and the retained parcel about 317 meters of frontage. Pro's lot will be three and a half hectares or about 3.5 hectares in area, um, with the retained being about 2.6 hectares in area. Subject property is zoned and designated rural and no change is recommended to that. Um, there are some mapped wetlands, water bodies and water courses in the vicinity of the subject property and located on the retained parcel. Um, here on the next slide, you can see uh, this is some details with regards to the, um, uh, the, the okay, sorry, the, we evaluated both, so severed and retained. I'm, Severed is northern, retained is southern. Okay. Yes. All right. So on this one, the, the southern property, uh, the proposed building envelope is shown in the center and the green with the outline. There's a septic test hole dug in this property. Um, and the septic was reviewed for both the severed and retained parcels on this. There's an entrance proposed approximately halfway up. Um, here on the other one, you can see this is the wetlands that are in proximity. They're on the opposite side of Ball Road here. But again, there's the proposed building envelope shown in green and location of the septic test hole. Um, this property has an existing farm entrance located uh, at the northern end of it that's proposed to be upgraded to accommodate the anticipated residential development. Um, the other lot here does not have an existing entrance, but has an entrance proposed approximately halfway up the lot. And Public Works confirmed that this proposed entrance does meet the requirements for an entrance permit from a township road. Um, there were two livestock facilities identified in the vicinity of this property. So the subject property is this triangular piece outlined in red. There is one on the opposite side of Ball Road, and then one on the property is south of that. MDS calculations were completed for both structures with the uh, type of livestock being confirmed by the owners. Um, the northern one has an influence area of approximately 168 meters and the southern 191 meters. So the southern barn uh, identified does not have its influence area impact the subject property um, in any way. The northern one, as you can see, the purple dash line does intersect with the subject property, but there is sufficient area located outside that area of influence for the construction of the dwelling and the evaluation was assuming that location outside that area of influence. This, the, uh, these applications, or I guess this application was circulated for review of um, septic. And as I noted, both the severed and retained parcels 
were evaluated for septic suitability uh, due to both the MDS and wetlands in the area. It was uh, determined that was the best option at this time. Comments received uh, had no objections to the creation of either parcel and noted that both sites are flexible with regards to setting a sewage system, but as is common, additional granular soil will be required to be imported and that can be determined specifically at the building permit stage. The application was circulated to Quinty Conservation Authority for review. They had no objections to the application as submitted and noted they did conduct a site visit to this property on the 17th of April this year. They noted and marked wetlands in the vicinity and on the retained parcel, um, but did not have any concerns with regards to any natural hazards and noted there's sufficient area for development on both parcels outside the required setbacks. So they have a Quinty Conservation has a minimum 15 meter setback in the wetlands, um, but do require permits for any development within 30 meters of the wetlands. Um, unlikely to be developed within that area as the township zoning bylaw requires a minimum 30 meter setback. So most likely no permits would be required, but they would have to confirm that with the conservation authority at the building permit stage. Again, the existing farm entrance to the retained or the northern parcel uh, will be upgraded and uh, can be upgraded to serve the residential development with the southern one meet, uh, proposed entrance meeting the requirements for the entrance permit for the Public Works Department. There were no public comments received with regards to this application. Planning staff are recommending approval of this application as submitted, subject conditions noted in the planning report, including a survey of the severed parcel, any outstanding taxes being paid, uh, certificates on within two years, and a 5% parkland fee as a standard condition. Thank you, Jenny. Is the applicant or an agent uh, here have any questions, comments? If either of the applicants wish to speak, can you use the raise hand feature? I see no one. Thank you. Is there any questions from the committee? Just a comment more so than a question. Uh, just to be transparent, this is our public works manager's property that's being um, severed. Um, none of us are related to him, nor will we give him any special favors. I would suggest at the time of the entrance being uh, established that he step back and let the supervisors uh, do the work. I think that's only fair to ask him to do that. And I don't think we need to put it on paper. I'm sure that he'll do that. And we'll drive by and make sure that it's acceptable. Thank you. I think Steve has already looked at the entrances. I will move uh, Tyson over so he can speak. You guys hear me okay? Yep. The uh, I was fully removed from the inspection of the entrances, and um, they're both they've already both been checked out and approved. And uh, there is one minor change to the uh, southern entrance. Uh, made more sense to put the entrance a little further south from the original farm entrance for better sight lines, but that's all been uh, done, and I wasn't a part of that at all. Thank you, Tyson. Any other questions from the committee? No? Is there anybody from the public wishing to comment on the application? If there's anyone else who wishes to co sorry, comment on this application, please use the raise hand feature. I see no one, Mr. Chair. Okay, we have a resolution moved by Danny Meeks and seconded by Lynn Clegas. The consent application B1123 HI Myers Barker for the property located at part lot 16 concession to geographic township of Hinchinbrook for a 3.4 hectare 8.5 acre parcel as a new lot be approved subject to the conditions noted in the planning report. That the secretary treasurer shall issue the notice of decision in accordance with the requirements of the planning act, including providing the notice of the decision to the applicant, any person or public body that made a written request to be notified and any other person or public body prescribed and that all conditions outlined in the notice of decision shall be completed and the certificate of official issued within a period of two years after the notice of decision was issued as required by the Planning Act. All in favor? Carried.
Okay, we now have application B1223, Rattan, creation of a new lot. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is subject property is located at uh, 2028 Oak Flats, Oak Flats Road in the geographic township of Hinchin Brook. Um, owned by Rister Rutan and uh, using in engineering surveying as their agent. The proposed severed parcel will be just over two hectares in area, uh, or no, uh, sorry, 3.4 hectares in area. I put the area in the road frontage. We'll figure it out on that one. With the retained parcel having uh, about 54 hectares or 135 acres in area, and the retained will have 70, 773 meters of frontage on Oak Flats Road. Um, the proposed severed parcel contains the existing dwelling and accessory buildings with the retained parcel, including uh, agricultural buildings and uses, and also including wetlands and a water body. Here on the next slide, you can see some more details with regards to this. So the severed parcel is located in uh, red, approximately the uh, center of the existing subject property. Um, would like to note that on this, that shows severance A and B. Severance B is not being applied for at this time. That was a, a proposal they had. They've opted not to move forward with that. So we're just looking at severance A on this diagram at this time. Um, uh, you can see on the detail, there's an existing dwelling and a septic area in proximity to it. The applicant will be enlarging the existing driveway and using half of the, uh, or the existing entrance for this dwelling and enlarging it so that the entrance to the retained parcel will actually be right up against the property line. It'll be like a double wide entrance with half of it being for the retained and half of it being for the severed. I noted there's agricultural buildings. Um, what's being retained is a milk shed uh, work sh and workshop. So there's no livestock in there. It's more of a processing type facility. So there was no MDS required for that. There was a livestock facility identified down the road and an MDS was completed for that. Um, that area of influence does not intersect with the proposed severed parcel in any way. So there's no concerns with regards to MDS on this property. Um, the application was not circulated for a view of septic uh, suitability. As I noted, the severed parcel contains existing services and at 135 acres, uh, the retained parcel is large enough that it is highly likely there will be somewhere you can put a septic on there. Um, it meets the criteria from the approval authority not to have further detailed investigations. Um, so there was no concerns with regards to septic suitability on these with regards to this application. Uh, Quinty Conservation Authority was circulated for review and they have no objections to this as submitted. Um, they did note, again, there's wetlands identified on the subject property, uh, the majority of which are located on the retained parcel. And there, again, there's existing development on this severed parcel. Um, however, the identified wetlands are regulated by Quinty and would require permits prior to development in proximity of them. It's between 30 and 45 meters, um, depending on I guess which wetland. I'm not a conservation zone person, so I don't know what the difference is, but that was what they said. There's no natural hazard concerns identified with regards to this application. Um, again, Public Works Department confirmed the proposed lot has the existing entrance. And as I noted, there's suitable locations for new entrance on the retained has been confirmed. There were no public comments received with regards to this application. Planning staff are recommending that the committee hear comments from the public today, if there are any, and approve this application as submitted subject to the conditions in the planning report, including um, the standard conditions of survey of the lot, outstanding taxes be paid, certificate within two years, and the 5% parkland fee. Thank you, Jenny. Is the applicant or their agents uh, with us and have any questions? If the applicant wishes to speak and use the raise hand feature. I see no one, Mr. Chair. Does the committee have any questions at this time? Brian? I have a question for Jenny. <clears throat> um, we didn't circulate for septic approval because of the size of the lot. I don't think I've ever seen that before. And what is the criteria for not asking for a septic approval? 
Um, so the proposed severed parcel has existing services and the retained is uh, 30, 135 acres. Um, the general requirements in consultation with the septic authority is that if it's greater than 10 acres in area, um, they don't really require any investigation because on that size or larger, there would be somewhere on there. So that was more just a note on this that any of these larger retained parcels, even though they're able to be severed and there are wetlands and things on them, the size of them means that the, they don't have concerns and that's sort of their unofficial rule of when we filter and when we don't circulate. So it's only the retained that that applies to, not the severed parcel? What's What if the severed parcel was 12 acres? Anytime we sever a parcel, we would always uh, circulate for review regardless of the size of it, just because if we're making the lot, we'd want to ensure that. Um, that's the the policies that they have with our, our memorandum of understanding with them. Um, so, hmm? I just find that's interesting because we're creating two lots by having a retained and the severed, and yet only one has to have the approval. What the retained? Yeah, yeah usually don't do the I'm going to say generally when it's circulated for review, um, they only review septic suitability on the proposed severed and not the retained. And unless, again, if it's a smaller one, the like that previous one on Ball Road, they looked at both because both parcels were less than 10 acres. I said most of the time, either the retained has existing services, in which case, we're not concerned or it's of a sufficient size that it's not required. If it was a smaller one, it is something that we would be requesting that they review. Okay, any other further questions? No, is there anybody from the public wishing to comment on this application? If there's anyone online wishing to speak, use the raise hand feature. I see no one, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. So we have a resolution moved by Francis Smith and seconded by Bill Everett that consent application B1223HI retained for the property located at Part Lot 6, Concession 5, Geographic Township of Hinchinbrook for a 2.09 hectare, 5.16 acre parcel as a new lot be approved subject to the conditions noted in the planning report that the Secretary Treasurer shall issue the Notice of Decision in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act, including providing the Notice of Decision to the applicant, any person or public body that made a written request to be notified, and any other person or public body prescribed, and that all conditions outlined in the Notice of Decision shall be completed and the Certificate of Official issued within a period of two years after the Notice of Decision was issued, as required by the Planning Act. All in favour? Carried. We will now look at application B1323HI. Holgan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is an application for creation of a new lot uh, from a parcel located at 3122A Echo Lake Road. So the proposed severed parcel will have uh, approximately or minimum 50 meters or so of frontage on Echo Lake Road. Uh, the retained parcel will have the similar 50 meters of frontage on Echo Lake Road. Um, the retained parcel also has, it's about a kilometre and a half on a newly named lane, which I'm not sure the name they were in the process of doing it as part of another application. Either it will be named shortly um, or it hasn't, I'm just not aware of it, but they do have a long amount of frontage on a, uh, pr a pr private road right of way. So the proposed lot will be about 3.6 hectares in area with the retained parcel being 15 and a half hectares or about just under 40 acres in area and the proposed being 8.4 acres. The lots are uh, designated and zoned rural and it's noted there's wetlands on both the severed and retained parcels. Here on the next slide, you can see the shape of the proposed lot. Um, Slightly irregular, uh, however, the pieces that make it more irregular were taken out previously. Um, so this actually kind of squares it up. Um, and one of the reasons of for the size, while the development area is in proximity to Echo Lake Road, is there's a large portion of this rear area that's actually a wetland. 
And in order to conserve natural heritage features on a single property, the air lot lines were extended to encompass the entire wetland area on the proposed severed parcel. So we weren't bisecting it any more than already existed. Um, that's a policy that conservation generally had. Um, however, with the regulation changes, they're not able to comment on those features. So we are trying to work with the, the intention of what they would have likely requested. So there are some wetlands identified on the retained and um, what you can see here, this big gray line that goes all the way through the middle, um, that is the, uh, the right of way or private road that goes up to lots that actually have water frontage on Echo Lake. Uh, this was circulated for review of uh, septic suitability. Formal comments have not yet been received, but since the writing of the report, I did receive an email from the septic authority that they have been out and they don't have any objections. So we've included uh, septic suitability comments in uh, in writing as a condition or recommended condition of, of approval of this application. Quinty Conservation Authority did uh, provide comments and this application and have no objections to it as submitted. Again, they noted there's identified wetlands on the subject property, which are regulated by Quinty and would require permits prior to development in proximity. Um, however, the development area proposed on this lot does meet all of the minimum required setbacks for development per Quinty Conservation. They did not indicate any concerns with regards to natural hazards on this property, and no comments were received from the public regarding this application. As such, planning staff are recommending that the committee hear comments from the public today if there are any, and approve this application subject to the conditions in the planning report. Um, again, similar standard ones to previous, survey of the lot, outstanding taxes, certificate within two years, and 5% parkland fee. In this case, we're also recommending a uh, road widening condition as the width of Echo Lake Road in this vicinity is less than the 20 meters generally required by the official plan. Also, Echo Lake Road is not located within the center of even what is surveyed. So this way the township will have enough area to actually do upgrades should that be required. Um, and as I noted, uh, the suitable septic comments in writing uh, recommended as a congestion, just to ensure that there aren't any outstanding concerns for development on this property. Thank you, Jenny. Do we have the applicants or an agent? If the applicant wishes to speak, oh, she's put up her hand. I'm just moving you over. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Um, I did have one question. When it says a road widening on Echo Lake Road, what exactly does that mean? Sorry about that. I just am not overly familiar with it. So do we have to designate like another 10 feet of that property for road widening or do we? Yeah, we'll let Jenny answer that question for you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, um, Linda. So what this is, is well, when you're having the property surveyed, the process for this is that the surveyor will also measure a distance of 10 meters or 33 feet from the center line of the traveled portion of Echo Lake Road. And any part that is of that measurement that is outside the existing lot lines of your property gets transferred as a separate single part to the township. Um, most oftentimes, this is a small strip of varying widths. It's not even consistent, usually along the road frontage, depending on where the road is and where the lot lines are. Um, but it will be whatever is required to make up that 10 meters on the north side of the traveled portion of Echo Lake Road. And that's the surveyor that will determine that, which what the width is at the time when they survey the rest of the lot. I hope that makes sense. It does. Thank you very much. Okay. Does the committee have any questions at this time? Is there anybody from the public wishing to comment on this application? If there's anyone wishing to speak, use the raise hand feature. I see no one, Mr. Chair. Okay. We have a resolution moved by Bill Everett and seconded by Fran Smith that consent application B13-23 also called in for the property located at part lot 15 concession 8, the geographic township of Hinchbrook. Is that right then? Is it in? No, so uh, sorry. So we'll start over. Resolution moved by Bill Everett and second by Francis Smith that consent application B13 23 
HI Colgan for the property located at part lot 15 concession eight geographic township of Hinchinbrook for a 3.6 hectare 8.84 acre parcel as a new lot be approved subject to the conditions noted in the planning report that the secretary treasurer shall issue the notice of decision in accordance with the requirements of the planning act including providing the notice of decision to the applicant any person or public body that made a written request to be notified and any other person or public body prescribed and that all conditions outlined in the notice of decision shall be completed and the certificate of an official issued within a period of two years after the notice of decision was issued as required by the planning act all in favor carried Uh, we'll now hear application B fifteen twenty three H I Hoover creation of a new lot. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm actually going to be speaking to both B fifteen twenty three and B sixteen twenty three, um, as they are two new lots to be created from the same parcel. Um, so it makes sense to address them as a, a single presentation here. However, we do have separate resolutions for them. So this will be uh, the proposed is two new lots from a vacant property with frontage on White Lake Road in the geographic township of Hinsham Brook. Each of the severed parcels is proposed to have a minimum road frontage of 46 meters, 150 feet, and a minimum area of 0.8 hectares or two acres, which meets the minimum requirements in the rural zone. Um, there's mapped wetlands and water bodies on uh, the subject property with some small portions of those on the severed parcels, um, mostly limited water courses at the very back of them a majority of any of the natural features are actually on the severed or on the retained parcel i mean the retained parcel will have about 120 meters of frontage on white lake road and an area of about 32.4 hectares or around 80 acres in area um, no rezoning is proposed through this app as a result of these applications As you can see here on the next slide, the two proposed lots are um, in the southeast corner of the subject property. Um, on the retained lands, there's a large cleared area, which is a hydro transmission corridor. So these lots are proposed outside that influence area. And again, the majority of the wetlands water bodies that have been identified on this property are located on the retained parcel. Um, this one actually had a Interesting, the water course or the wetlands on the one side are of Quinty jurisdiction as they drain into Coal Lake and the, the water bodies, Rito Valley jurisdiction, as it goes in the opposite direction. Um, Rito Valley wasn't um, circulated because of this limited amount of it with most of it being Quinty and where the proposed lots are, their watershed's actually Quinty. So they were the ones that commented on the new lots. I love boundary ones, they're always fun. Um, again, so this was, uh, both of these were circulated for review of septic approval. Um, again, no formal comments have been received, but uh, they have been out to visit the properties and there were no concerns indicated in emails. So again, recommending as conditions for both of these that those formal comments be received, just to confirm there's no concerns with regards to septic on the proposed lots. Again, Quinty Conservation did provide comments and they also have no objections as submitted to either of the proposed lots. Uh, no natural hazard concerns. While there are some slopes in topography on this property, their proposed lots are both fairly level um, and suitable for development. Uh, the Quinty requires permits for development within 45 meters of any water courses identified on the retained and within 120 meters of these the wetlands on the retained. Um, at 80 acres, uh, it is highly likely to be areas in proximity to White Lake Road for development, but there's no development proposed at this time. Uh, there were no public comments received with regards to either of these applications. Planning staff are uh, recommending approval of both of these applications subject to the conditions in the planning report, which um, will be the same for both of these proposed lots. And they are survey of each lot, outstanding taxes on the property, certificate within two years, 5% parkland fee, um, satisfactory septic approval. And again, in this case, a road widening is being recommended as while the, the surveyed air road or the surveyed area for the road allowance is 20 meters, 
White Lake Road is right at the very top of this. So there's actually almost no area on the north side, which is where these are pr uh, proposed, um, outside what's surveyed. So planning staff are recommending a road widening in this vicinity just to ensure that uh, should works need to be done in the area of these lots, that it can be done in the future. Thank you, Jenny. Is the applicant or the regent with us? If the applicant wishes to speak, use the raise hand feature. I see none. Does the committee have any questions? Seeing none, is there anybody from the public that would like to comment on this application? Does anyone online wishing to speak use the raise hand feature? I see none, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So we have a resolution moved by Francis Smith and seconded by Bill Everett that consent application B1523HI Hoover for the property located at part lot 11 concession to geographic township of Hinchinbrook for an 0 0.80 hectare two acre parcel as a new lot be approved subject to the conditions noted in the planning report that the secretary treasurer shall issue the notice of decision in accordance with the requirements of the planning act including providing the notice of decision to the applicant any person or public body body that made a written request to be notified and any other person or public body prescribed and that all conditions outlined in the notice of decision shall be completed and the certificate of official issued within a period of two years after the notice of decision was issued as required by the planning act all in favor carried And the second resolution to go with this, moved by Lynn Clegus and seconded by Susan Susan Irwin, that consent application B1623HI Hoover for the property located at part lot 11 concession to geographic township of Hinchinbrook for a 0.8 hectare two acre parcel as a new lot be approved subject to the conditions noted in the planning report that the secretary treasurer shall issue the notice of decision in accordance with the requirements of the planning act including providing the notice of decision to the applicant and any person or public body that made a written request to be notified and any other person or public body prescribed and that the all conditions outlined in the notice of decision shall be completed and the certificate of official issued within a period of two years after the notice of decision was issued as required by the planning act all in favor carried And we will now hear application B1823 KE Bigwin Law Edition. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so this is an application. Uh, it will be more interesting as you see some of the pictures on the following slides of the layout of these properties. Um, so it's an application for a lot edition uh, from a property located in the geographic township of Kennebec and actually within the boundaries of the hamlet of Arden. The address on this property is 1043B, Big Clear Lane, um, although very little frontage is actually on Big Clear Lane. Um, so the severed parcel, the lot addition parcel, um, the, will have approximately 47 meters on a unnamed right of way that accesses this property from Big Clear Lane, because the current benefiting lot actually has no frontage on the right of way that accesses it, no frontage on Big Clear Lane. Um, again, more explanation with the pictures in a minute. Um, the retained parcel has, will have about uh, 59 and a half or 60 meters of frontage on, again, that unnamed right of way. Um, and will also have 21 meters of frontage on Big Clear Lake, neither the severed parcel or benefiting lot has any water frontage either. Um, these properties are, zone, are designated residential areas. I noted they're within the boundary of the hamlet of Arden and all three or both the benefiting and retained parcel are zoned residential waterfront. Um, while the benefiting lot does not have water frontage directly, it's within the waterfront area, um, the 150 meters from the lake. So it makes sense from a use point of view that it is zoned waterfront residential, as those are the most appropriate uses for properties in this proximity. So the lot addition parcel will be about 192 square meters or 0 0.05 acres in area. The lot that will benefit from this is actually smaller than that and is 99 square meters or 0 0.02 acres in area. And the retained parcel will be just over one, half a hectare or about 1.4 acres in area. 
here on the next slide, we can see a little more of the uh, challenges. So the benefiting lot is part five. It is this green triangle or green square is surrounded by the irregularly shaped blue part, which is the proposed lot addition. Um, the owners of the green square also own the green part that has actual frontage on the lake. Um, and in this one, the red areas are owned by the subject property who are requesting this lot addition. Um, the existing lot that's going to benefit from this, the entirety of that subject property is a cottage. And the lot was surveyed to the boundaries of this cottage. So when you park in the front yard or have a front porch, that's on your neighbor's property. And that's a challenge that we're looking at rectifying it through this um, so that the structures attached to the cottage can be on the same property as the cottage. Um, generally, we wouldn't do this today, but these are things that have happened in the past and many surveys were had and, and many discussions were looked at to figure out exactly which are the right pieces to be added to what and where. Um, so the waterfront property that's also owned by these par um, uh, parties does have a garage on it. It used to have a cottage, but that has uh, since come down. So again, this uh, gives you a little bit more of a zoomed out. So the previous slide was a zoomed in of this area. There's also a larger area around on the other side of that uh, unnamed right-of-way that is part of the subject property. So the as I said, I noted the benefiting lot um, is a cottage. The subject property already has a cottage on and has uh, between this portion at the north and at the south, the combined water frontage of both areas is only 21 meters. So again, some challenges, but these are very older, much older cottage lots and they're already developed. So both the uh, retained parcel and benefiting lot do contain development. Um, so there's no change to the, the density of development or their development potential along Big Clear Lake. Um, there was no uh, circulation for septic suitability. Um, as, as I noted, everything is developed and the lot addition does not contain septic, is not in the vicinity of any septic parcels. Um, so there was no concerns with regards to locating septic systems through property lines or I guess property lines through septic systems. Um, so that was not required as part of this application. Quinty Conservation did uh, comment on this. They were circulated as a, a, a waterfront property. Um, they have no objections to this application as submitted, um, no natural hazard concerns. Uh, they did note that a permit would be required from their office for any development on any of the parcels in this general area within 45 meters of the one in 100 year floodplain of Big Clear Lake. Um, that wasn't marked because it was not actually on either the benefiting parcel or the subject property. Uh, it's on another parcel. Again, it's a, an interesting situation with regards to what we're doing and what we're trying to fix here. So there were no public comments received with regards to this application. Um, planning staff are recommending uh, the committee hear any comments from the public today if there are any and approve this uh, application subject to conditions in the planning report. Those include the fairly standard conditions of survey of uh, the lot addition parcel. In this case, it is identified on two or three different surveys. Um, those could be used to satisfy this condition. Outstanding taxes on the um, subject parcel must be paid and certificate officials signed within two years. Um, when writing the report in consultation with the manager of planning, um, it was noted that the property that the lot addition is coming from is less than what would be required for a waterfront property today. Um, and we are further reducing that, albeit by a very small amount. Um, so planning staff are recommending uh, minor variance approval to recognize the deficiency in lot area for the retained parcel um, as a, the proper procedure in order to process the application. Thank you, Jenny. Is the applicant or their agents with us and have any questions? If you can come up and uh, use the microphone. Good 
Good afternoon, uh, committee members, and thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I am Elaine Bigwin, and my name is on the, uh, the application. I'd also like to introduce my sister, Elizabeth Bigwin. Uh, she has been working closely um, on this process uh, with me, and so uh, she has some comments she'd like to make on our behalf. Okay. Just a couple of minutes of your time. So through this consent application, uh, we've highlighted the lots that have existed since the early part of the last century, around 1908, uh, I think as Jenny was referring to, which were originally all one lot, but uh, and they had one owner, but have since been split in, in interesting ways, as you have seen. It's our plan as current owners to move towards legally defining those parameters and defining the current ownership and usage. So thank you for consideration of our application. The planning report indicates, I think, that we're on the same track. As stated in your report and emphasized here, the, the cottage at 1043C sits on, in fact, is surrounded by land that is owned by us, the owners of 1043B. We were not looking to create new lots or any of the other language that we hear through the other applications, but, but merely um, defining more appropriately what that land constitutes so that the owners of 1043C can enjoy the use of their cottage without feeling as though they're encroaching the word that was used in the report. Very simply, the goal here is to allow the owners to step out of their door, be able to step onto their own land instead of, it looks like they have to jump somewhere to, to, to get off, out of their cottage. And further, we as owners of that land would be absolved of any financial burden that comes with owning the property through the tax taxes that we pay. Clearly it's challenging for all to try to define properties that were historically linked in a casual and familiar manner, thanks to our grandfather, and make them fit into the 2011 zoning bylaw that we've tried to, to make our way through. And it's not, I don't know how you do it, uh, but we've tried to go through it and, and see how things fit. We understand that our lot is deficient and you have, you have said that our lot is deficient. Um, it was before we began this process, it's going to continue to be deficient. And uh, since we all understand that, our question is this, is it possible that the committee could simply declare a minor variance? Are you able to take a look at that and say, here's the decision for, for the record that it is in fact deficient and grant a minor variance? Um, that would be really helpful to us. Uh, we're taking a look at the application process for a minor variance. It's it's complicated. It looks like you would get information that you already have through this process and through records um, of the that the county already has. And we are we looked at the section forty five of the Planning Act and those four questions. It seems that the information is already there and that you have that. Uh, we feel that um, anything else that we provide would be, um, we just feel that you probably have the information. So to sum up, each of us here in our respective roles are faced with a puzzle piece that just doesn't fit. Therefore, we would ask that this committee consider our unique situation, reconsider the information we've already provided, and that which is already on file with the county and approve the minor variance without a separate formal application and without an additional fee. This would allow us, the owners, to move to the next step without completing exercise, exercises in math and geography and moving through another application process that would inevitably take up the time of this committee. And really that's that's the only request that we have um, given the conditions. We understand the other conditions and, and we would uh, hope to fulfill those. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, maybe Jenny, if you can talk to whether whether the committee can actually do that and it just, their comments kind of make sense, right? We have two undersized lots. We're trying to fix a situation that exists to make it better, so. 
Um, absolutely, Mr. Chair. Um, the committee does have the option to remove any of the conditions recommended. I mean, um, if we're going to look purely at procedure, the proper procedure would be to have a minor variance application fee in a separate thing and come back. Um, however, recognizing their comments, um, the, the policies of the official plan and zoning bylaw do speak to not creating lots that have deficiency or non-compliance with the zoning bylaw, um, as this is a situation that was already deficient, um, this lot addition would not be creating that situation. So um, technically approving this without that additional minor variance or removing that condition um, would not be in violation of the bylaw because again, it's the policies do speak to creating deficiencies and this isn't a deficiency that would be created. Um, generally, I would not support even um, further reductions in deficiencies of existing deficient lots um, because that doesn't meet the intent. Um, however, in this case, I can totally appreciate their concerns that it's more we're fixing things and when we're looking at the sizes of these lots that a lot addition at 192 square meters is twice what the actual existing lot is. Like the numbers are really small here and it really just, it makes sense. So. Um, the committee wouldn't be in violation of the zoning bylaw official plan if they wanted to do it. Um, however, as I noted in uh, discussions with my manager, the official proper procedure would be to do that. But I think this is one of those cases where it makes perhaps sense not to. Um, so I always recommend based on proper procedure and policy. But again, those you wouldn't be violating any of the policies that talk to creating deficiencies. Um, and um, in conversation with lawyers, I was actually just at a committee of adjustment conference this week, and some of these things came up. And once the certificate of official is signed and registered, it is deemed to be in compliance, regardless of any minor variance that was or was not processed. So if the committee removes that and the township signs it and approves it, it is then deemed to be in compliance with the, the planning act. Does the committee have any questions? I would just like to suggest that we remove it. Thank you. And that we be flexible and we be sensible and we fix this now. Sure. Is there any other questions or comments from the committee? So procedurally, so do we add it on the... To, I guess amend remove condition number seven. Subject to the conditions within the planning report. And we do have one user still online. I'm just going to ask if there's any comments that that user wishes to you, uh, make. No, I hear no one. So, Okay, so if there's no other comments, we have a re resolution moved by Lynn Clegas and seconded by Susan Irwin. The consent application B1823 AE Big Wind for the property located at Concession 9, Part Lot 14, Reference Plan 13R 3699, Parts 1 to 8, Reference Plan 13R 7130, Part 3, Big Clear Lake 12 30, Geographic Township of Kennebec for a 0 0.05 hectare, 0 0.123 acre parcel as a lot addition be approved subject to the conditions noted in the planning report, excluding the requirement for minus, minor variance condition number 17, sorry, number seven. That the secretary treasurer shall issue the notice of decision in accordance with the requirements of the planning act, including providing the notice of decision to the applicant, any person or public body that made a written request to be notified and any other person or public body prescribed. And that all conditions outlined in the notice of decision shall be completed and the certificate official issued within a period of two years after the notice of decision was issued as required by the planning act. All in favor? Carried. Uh, thank you uh, to the committee for your time and decision. Yeah.
Okay, we have no applications for minor variants. Are there any other planning matters to discuss? No. All right, then we have a resolution moved by Susan Irwin and seconded by Lynn Cleggis that the meeting be adjourned until 4 p.m. July 13th, 2023, virtually and in person at Oso Hall, 1107 Garrett Street in Sherbert Lake. All in favor? Carried. And we're adjourned.